Hi, this is Tom Fredman with Ventana Systems. I'd like to show you some methods for building causal loop diagrams in Vensim. We'll start simple in PLE and then look at a few additional tricks you can do in DSS and Pro. Okay, we're in Vensim PLE and I have a new blank model open because I'm starting from scratch. There are actually two strategies to building causal loop diagrams. If you're just building a CLD, uh, you can use the variable tool. It's slightly easier and faster. If you want to build a causal loop diagram that serves as kind of a uh, guide or summary to a working dynamic model that's in the same file, then you need to use the comment tool in place of the variable tool. It's almost exactly the same process. We'll take a look at the differences a little bit later. Okay, let's build a little population model. So I'm going to grab the variable tool and my advice when you're confronted with a blank sheet of paper is to just start putting things down because you'll get everything connected eventually. So I'm going to put population in the middle here, leaving myself some space to work. And populations associated with births and deaths. So there's a little bit of basic structure. Uh, I can start connecting these things. So I want to use the arrow tool bearing in mind that arrows here indicate causality, not just correlation. Uh, so births increase population. If I just do that, I get a straight line and then I can grab the handle here and adjust it to be curvy. Uh, but I can also shortcut that by clicking births, then clicking in the white space and then clicking on population and it'll pass through the point in the white space that I clicked. So births increase population is the story here. Population in turn increase births. And then uh, same thing with deaths. And I've got a choice here about whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise. I tend to like things entering and leaving variables in the same side. So I'm going to link population to deaths like this and then deaths back to population. There might be other situations where you'd want to flip the uh, orientation of that loop to coordinate with other loops that were coming in. Okay, there's a basic structure. Now let's pretty this up a bit. Uh, first of all, births is a function not only of population but of the birth rate. So I'm going to be clear and add that as a uh, influence or parameter here. And same thing for deaths. And I'll connect those with arrows. Now we might uh, pretty things up a little bit more. I could probably make my loops a little bit uh, loopier by making things more circular here. And then I can think about formatting. Uh, so one thing that's nice is to just uh, use a uh, nicer font. I'm just going to switch the default using the uh, toolbar here to Arial Black. Makes for slightly uh, more readable diagram. And I'm going to select all of my uh, arrows here and change the arrow style to something a little heavier. And I may want to change one side uh, by recoloring it using the uh, toolbar here just to distinguish the uh, two loops. That's maybe a little bit uh, garish, but it will help uh, you refer to loops when you want to talk about this in front of people. So uh, to really make this diagram communicate, let's label the link polarities. Uh, we can just walk through these one at a time. So as births go up, that increases or adds to population. So this is a positive link. So I can right click the arrow to get the options and set the polarity to positive. And I can position the polarity mark at the arrowhead or the handle. I usually leave it at the arrowhead. Uh, but sometimes I move it to the handle to uh, get a little more flexibility in placing it. Um, 
And you can also put it on the inside or the outside of the circle. I'll leave this one on the inside. Uh, the uh, population to births link, so more people means more births. That's positive. And actually, I'm going to make this red in order to match the, the uh, loop itself. And then finally, as the birth rate goes up, that also increases the number of births. Uh, and that's another positive link, and we'll make that red as well. Uh, here I've got a little bit of a conflict, so I should move that polarity mark to the outside. And that looks pretty good. So let's do the same thing quickly for deaths. So deaths subtract from the population. All else equal more deaths means fewer people, so that's a negative link. And we'll make that blue to match. But on the other hand, if we have more people, that's more deaths. Uh, okay. And as the death rate goes up, the number of deaths goes up. And I forgot to move that to the outside, so we'll do that quickly. All right, that looks pretty nice. Okay, uh, that's the links. Now let's tackle the loops. Uh, so thinking about this red loop here, as population goes up, births go up, births add to the population, more births, all else equal, more population. So a change in population winds up, uh, or an increase in population winds up reinforcing itself. So this is a positive loop or a reinforcing loop. So I'm going to label it as such, and I'm going to grab the comment tool to do that, and click right in the middle here. And I'm going to indicate this as a loop so I'm going to change the appearance setting to be a clockwise loop, bearing in mind that the icon should correspond with the uh, direction of the actual loop. And I can give this a, either a, a name or a, a R or a B for reinforcing or balancing. I'm going to give it an R. And I should probably bump up the font size uh, a bit. That's OK. And I could color that as well. Um, let's do the same thing. So here, as population goes up, more deaths, more deaths, fewer people. So that's a balancing loop. And this runs counterclockwise. So I'll put a B for balancing. And again, bump up the size a little bit. OK, and in a uh, bigger diagram, I'll often give these uh, either numbers, like R1, R2, B1, B2, or uh, some kind of uh, comment text that indicates a name that tells the story of the loop. That way, in the, in the text or in your talk, you can refer to the loop by number or by name and make it easy for people to navigate to the structure that you're focusing on. A couple other tricks. I've been using the toolbar settings down here to change formatting, but you can also right click on variables uh, to highlight them, for example. Set a background color on births. Uh, you can do the same with arrows to change their color. And I've been working zoomed in, but actually I have quite a bit more real estate if I want to make this diagram bigger. A few more tricks. I can apply the uh, same methods to a stock flow model to document the polarity of the links and clarify other aspects of it, like uh, loop polarities. One thing to bear in mind is that a flow, an outflow in particular, Causality doesn't follow the direction of the arrow. The causality runs from deaths back to population. So if I right-click this, uh, this arrow segment here, I can add a uh, polarity to it. But notice it appears uh, 
it sh or should appear on this segment of the pipe and I may want to uh, move it to the arrowhead just to place it closer to the stock. You can see it right there. Um, so uh, if I'm starting with a stock flow model like this, I may want to have a causal loop diagram in addition in order to uh, explain things better. Um, if I want it to coexist in the same file but not use the same and use the same names as the variables but not the actual variables, then I need to use uh, sketch comments to place that. So I can grab the comment tool and I can create a population comment and I'm going to uncheck uh, or I'm going to leave the use as arrow junction checked. That lets me connect arrows to this uh, comment and I'm going to check no cause. Otherwise Vensim will prevent me from creating loops or cycles in the uh, uh, arrows that connect comments. So there's population and here's births. and I can connect these and I could pretty that up. Uh, so this gives me a uh, summary for uh, the dynamics of the births part of the population structure and you can use that strategy to create higher level explanations of some of the key features of a model without revealing the full structure and parameters and maybe uh, nuisance variables um, that are required underneath to really make the simulation go. Switching to Vensim DSS, yet another strategy for creating a causal loop diagram that summarizes the uh, content of a stock flow model uh, are possible. Uh, so I can create a new diagram but within the same model, and I can use the model variable tool to place existing variables. So I'm going to place population here. And you'll notice that it adds population along with its causes. So I'm just going to drag deaths and births off to the side here. And then if I click on births and deaths with the same tool, it'll add their causes as well. So there's births and the birth rate, and there's deaths and the death rate. And of course, in a complex model, you can use this to trace through the structure. Now you'll notice that the uh, arrows are bi-directional here uh, because they're actually overlapping, but I can quickly clean that up. And now I have the causal loop diagram representation of the stock flow structure that I had in my first view. And the nifty thing is that these are the actual underlying variables. So if I want to run the model in Synthesim, I'll make myself a little more space. And I'll make these a little bit bigger. So uh, we'll have more visible graphs. Now I simulate in Synthesim. And you can see I, I have the uh, behavior of each variable live on the diagram. So I now have a uh, simulatable causal loop diagram along with its corresponding stock flow structure. And finally, when models get more complicated, let's take a look at world dynamics. You can use comments to create a navigation system for your model. Uh, so here you'll notice I have uh, the major sectors of the model, population and food capital and quality of life, pollution and resources, and actually population and food are separate sectors, so I should probably uh, turn that into two objects. Um, but these are actual navigable uh, tiles here. So if I click on population and food, it takes me to the population and food diagram, and then I've given myself a little button to go home here. Um, and the way that works can be seen easily by right clicking on one of these. So population and food is a comment created using the comment tool. And I've set the navigate view setting here to the name of a view in the model. So I set it to the population and food sector. 
And uh, since this is a comment, I could also uh, check the uh, no cause box on at least one per loop, and I could indicate the high level relationships among these sectors as well. Um, so I could build up a high level diagram with navigation to the low level diagrams that comprise the uh, individual sectors. Chapter 5 of John Sturman's Business Dynamics is full of good advice on causal loop diagramming, including good variable naming, loop and link polarity identification, and other essential habits. John Moorcroft has a nice re review of diagramming tools in the Dynamica archives on the System Dynamics Society website. You can Google a couple of nice articles by George Richardson on problems with causal loop diagrams. These don't mean that causal loop diagrams are bad, it's just that you should be aware of these things so that you can use them wisely. There's a nice article in the HBR on crap circles, those vacuous loopy diagrams that you find in PowerPoint. Here's my favorite, found by John Sturman at a climate negotiation. Notice how causality proceeds from 2015 back in time to 1988. Don't do that. Finally, no discussion of causal loop diagrams would be complete without the dreaded Afghan spaghetti. This diagram actually got a bad rap because it summarized a lot of good thinking and even an underlying simulation model. So much more was known about the structure that you see here than reporters were willing to tolerate in a briefing. Uh, however, this is not where you should start. If this kind of diagram emerges from a group process or a brainstorming exercise, that's great. But otherwise, to better communicate your own results and clarify your own thinking, you should probably start simple, uh, build outward like an onion, and keep to manageable chunks of structure that you always understand. Good luck with your diagrams. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos in the Vensim video library, and we'll see you in the Vensim forum.